So, in London, England, for my first trip, I reached out on Instagram and everybody said, you have to go to Denmark Street. That's where all the cool guitar shops are. That's where all the history is. So, my friend, Philip Conrad, and I are about to jump on the tube and make a pilgrimage to Denmark Street. We made it. Two trains and a coffee and a pastry later. We're here. Uh, dude. 64-330. Original case. 64. That music master is pretty sweet. Real good, how are you? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. This thing sounds like an old tree. <laughs> Sixty-four. Sounds pretty good. shape too man all right so we checked out three stores so far we're about to go into 60 60 sounds um, so I've heard this is a really cool shop to check out and then we're gonna go down to Macari's and I'm gonna try and get my hands on a, uh, a color sound because you can't get them in the States so. Pretty cool. It's like the same as Dave's original one. Right. It's like, all I can play is Foo Fighters. I like, <laughs> yeah. just can't play anything else. But it literally just sounds like that. It's just nuts. Right. Yeah. 66 Trini Lopez. Oh, no. Yeah. 
I mean, Regent Sounds, which is the main vendor agent for the street, that was like the premier studio yeah. on the street. So, like, but they're good friends. Yeah. You know, they're the, the store that if you talk about carrying on the lineage, yeah. they're like integral to the kind of previous years of Denmark Street. Macari's, which were on Denmark Street, they've now consolidated into one store. They were the, actually the first store on Denmark Street. So I worked there before I set this up. And just like a supremely interesting store, you know, they've been established for over 60 years. Hendrick shop there, just about every rock star you can think has passed through their doors. So you still have stores that now have a, a lineage and a link to that time that are existing, you know, right up until 2019. And then you've got lots of new stores like ourselves. So, you know, we opened just under two years ago. Um, and very aware of the history, very keen to carry it on. Yeah. Um, but obviously it's like a, a new dawn and, and I think what I'm really excited about is the owners of this street, the landlords, have just invested 350 million pounds in the area. So not the area at large, solely on Denmark Street. And the whole idea is to revamp, rewrap and essentially repack the street. So we just left 6060 Sounds, super cool guys over there. Um, played a really cool 66 Trini Lopez. So now we're headed to Macari's, which uh, from everything I've heard is like one of the OG spots around here. And I want to check out a color sound pedal because I've been trying to get my hands on one for a long time and you can't get them in the States. So I'm going to go play some stuff. Yeah, we're trying to get Google's on his Facebook. What a pro. Cool. So if you walk out the door here at Macari's, you'll go past made.com which is the furniture shop yeah that was um jennings originally where, where my uncle was the manager from 1956 so he um sold the stuff to the beatles and the stones and the shadows and all that stuff there which was pretty damn cool and then in 65 he got a shop with my dad in denmark street which was second turning right yeah so it was the first music shop in denmark street um and the guys from vox had this fuzz circuit idea Tom Jennings wasn't interested in it he thought they were all nuts and they came to my dad and my uncle and they said you know Gary Hurst in particular said um, do you think you could uh, do anything with this you know I think the kids are going to go nuts for it Satisfaction had just come out they'd, yeah. they'd used the Maestro FZ1 on that but the tone bender was the first British fuss and they said yep yeah, let's make it let's market it and of course the rest is history really uh, it, the right people got hold of it um, Jeff Beck got one um, obviously uh, Keep On Running, Spencer Davis Group, so um, that was the first big hit with it. Uh, and it just went berserk from there, really. Yeah. That was the Mark I. The Mark II, of course, ended up on Led Zepp I. Yeah. Um, the Mark I eventually ended up on all the Bowie stuff. The 1.5 was developed into the Fuzz Face, so obviously it was the Hendrix thing. Right. And then, um, obviously, through the 70s, all the British rock bands used it, and it became the sort of British fuzz sound yeah. yeah it isn't how we make our living you know yeah. we we sell guitars right. so this is just something we're immensely proud of and yeah. we try and make it to the very very high standards we can and mm. as a tribute to my dad and my uncle really amazing yeah. man. Got two of them left yeah, the original man. 70s z-tech transistors in there this is our latest version of the mark 4 get something half the size obviously because that's the be evil a son of the green bastard <laughs> two oc882ds like and an oc44 beneath so that's the amazing as well, I suppose. Yeah. Um, um, germanium pedal behind it hybrid the, yep. just to silicon and germanium yeah. and so that in the in right. the middle price wise yeah. silicon to raise the gain yeah. germanium yeah. to give you the texture right. and there's a germanium diode at the end which just gives it the cleanup that yeah. you expect out of a germanium pedal yeah. and that you don't get out of a silicon um, pedal. Got it. Um, and we do have some collaboration with Dave Ranger of Freakenstein so TC tone bender TC tone bender TC tone bender what? Yeah, right. Freaking bender um, oh and there's fuzz sound so yeah we've got a lot of amazing Man. pedals I could just call to leave you to have a blast sure yeah absolutely there's, if we get it down to say we got it down to the mark 4 we could then try the other variation okay cool See you in a minute.
just that tone knob going from like 11 o'clock to 12. It sounds like a completely different pedal. <laughs> End of the new world of fuzz. <laughs> Hear all the guitars resonating? That's cool. Alright. So here's a tone bender mark four. Inside. These yeah. were original 1960 Mullard OC 82Ds. Wow. And they're green. And I know you can't smell them on the screen, but <laughs> they smell fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yeah. They smell old. Yeah. They're proper. That's the real deal. Wow. You know, there's people making fakes for these now. Yeah. And you can actually buy fake Mullards, Mullard OC 75s, and MKTs. Damn. World's going nuts. <laughs> Shit. Are you ready for it? Oh god. I can't. <laughs> I, I can't. I want to, but I can't afford that. I just want you to experience it. Uh, this is just one of the four. This is. <laughs> But that's, I mean, you, you heard, that's the best one. Yeah. That's, that's noticeably better. That's, they're all excellent. But that is like, if God played a fuzz, it's probably <laughs> that one right there. Joe Strummer is, uh, is smiling upon that one. If you didn't get that one, I would probably get this one or this one. What, either the yellow or the tone bender mark IV. I really like the the hybrid. I like what it does, but it's pretty similar to some fuzzes I already have. This one's really unique and it's cool. It's a bit crazy, isn't it? I said 15. I think it's 15 there. <laughs> Turn the camera off, Phil. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so when you go through Gatwick, you'll see a a thing with that. It's called Global Glue. Enjoy. Alright. Good day, man. Thank you very much. See you later. Thank you. Pleasure. It's good to meet you. Thank you for the history. Oh, it looks good. Yeah. Alright. We gotta get back to Greenwich. So, that's officially 
the most money I have ever spent and will hopefully ever spend on a pedal. 